Victoria Band Gas. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because Victoria has banned gas, isn't it? Uh, it's not even surprising anymore. Let me frame this up correctly. There we go. So, new Victorians home, new Victorian homes to go all electric from 2024. Now, I know people... I mean, who wants this? Gas is a very efficient burning fuel. It's a very effective way to cook. And frankly, I, I prefer cooking on gas than electric. I hate those the, you know glass induction stoves. You're going to scratch everything. A bit of fire is fine. And if you're worried about the, well, the, the off-gas, well, the byproduct from the combustion of gas, just open a window. This, this is just crazy. Victoria has a lot of gas. It's insane to not use it. They'll ship it everywhere. Ban exploration. And then, then you've got like the unions calling for a super profit tax and all these mines and natural resources. And oh, it's, we can't have anything good, guys. We cannot have anything good. You can't even cook on a gas stove anymore. New Victorian homes will save up to $1,000 off their annual energy bills. Sure. Sure, what bullshit. Um, while reducing home emissions, household emissions. Yeah, I doubt that. I seriously doubt that. Okay, how much of the infrastructure is already there in place to allow the gas to be transported, to be used? And now what are you going to do? Replace it with coal, bu- coal burning power. Let, you know what? Let's, let's look at, let's look at right now where the power from Victoria is being generated as I record this video in the morning. So we'll jump over here. So this is the Australian energy market. It's not in the morning, it's just in the afternoon. I should go have lunch. We have a look here in Victoria. Okay, so they've got all these beautiful wind and solar farms here. Now we've got this one here. There we go. You've got one running at 55%. That's nice. But one here at 43%. One here at 50%. I thought, sorry, 30%. One here at 48%. So these numbers are actually pretty good. They're doing real well. But look what we have here. You've got a coal power station running at 91%. Another coal power station running at 116%. And you've got another fossil fuel. Oh, that's running at zero. There we go. They haven't they haven't kicked in any of these guys, the top up plants when they need it. But you can see here, guys, if we look a bit further down, you can see how much of this energy production nationally is coming from coal and natural resources. So rather than allowing people to cook with gas, you're going to primarily be using natural resources because how many people are cooking at lunchtime? Sure, some would be now, but what about at nighttime? <laughs> and how many times have we looked at this when these are all when the wind is dead? Let's look at the wind now, actually. We will bring up the wind. We can see here. There you go. So they're getting some decent 23 knot winds along the coast here of Victoria at the moment. So they're generating some decent power, but notice how none of those wind farms are at 100% capacity. So when you, when you see the politicians bragging about how much energy they'll offset and all these benefits, it's often they'll they'll pretend like it's the these things are producing at one hundred percent efficiency, which they never do. There's a certain percentage they need to reach uh, over their lifetime, average it out to offset the embodied carbon and embodied energy in the manufacturing and installation of this infrastructure. I doubt all of them are getting there, but. This isn't really about reducing emissions. This is about sending a political statement. At least that's what it feels like. So, across the world, the cost of gas is rising sharply, and so is uncertainty around supply. Well, it wouldn't be. There wouldn't be any uncertainty. You got so much in the Bass Strait, but Vic Dan Andrews stopped exploration and opened it up again. That's the uncertainty. The uncertainty is brought about by the government, by the Victorian government. I guess they're creating the problem, and now they're providing the solution. Victorians are at the mercy of private companies exporting gas overseas, which has a real impact on the cost of Victorian homes. So what? So what? Let people, let individuals make that choice themselves if they want to install gas or electricity. Don't just take that choice away from them. 
but this this is labor guys they this is the the intel the, the intelligentsia assuming they know better than the plebeian that's what it is that's why the labor government is doing wor the work to make energy more affordable for victorians getting them the best deal on their home energy bills what bullshit that is <laughs> how expensive has power gotten weren't we meant to get a discount from the federal government this is why you can't trust the spin it's all just bullshit from January 2024, planning permits for new homes and residential subdivisions will only connect to all electricity electric networks, with homes taking advantage of more efficient, cheaper, and cleaner electric appliances. Unless it's powered by coal. If it's powered by coal, it would be better to burn gas. Okay? Just, just think of real... That's not me making up stuff. This is chemistry. These changes will apply to all new homes requiring a planning permit, including new public and social housing delivered by Victorian homes. Going all electric can deliver at no extra cost to the buyer uh, and will slash around 1000 per year off household energy bills or up to 2200 for households that also have solar installed. Solar, which is subsidised by the Victorian government, which, well, they can't even afford to run the bloody com game, so they're not doing that well, are they? All of this this free shit that you're getting, discount and stuff you're getting, it's putting the state into more debt. So you wonder why they put taxes on everything. Commencing immediately, all new public buildings that haven't reached design stage will also be all electric. This includes new schools, hospitals, police stations and other government-owned buildings. Victoria has the highest use of residential gas in Australia with around 80% of homes connected. Yes, so it's fantastic. I remember growing up in Victoria... We had a gas heater that my father could turn on and use all the time they needed. It was re it worked really well. Gas stove, cooking. The gas sector contributes about 17% to the state's emissions. And the move to electric systems is a key element in meeting, Victoria, in meeting Victoria's nation-leading emissions reduction target of 75 to 80%. I wonder how much of those state emissions from the gas sector are used in manufacturing compared to people cooking at home or hot water systems. These moves build on the 2022 reform that removed the requirement for gas connections for new homes. Since then, Victoria's leading builders and developers have already begun delivering energy bill savings and low emission all-electric homes. Yeah, of course, of course they have. They don't need to put the plumbing in for the gas. They save money. I bet your house construction costs haven't gone down, saving all that piping. To ensure homeowners can maximise the benefit of household renewable energy, the government is investing $10 million in a new residential electrification grants program. Grants. The Victorian government is in significant debt. Future generations are paying for this. Grants will be, will be available to volume home builders, developers and others to provide bulk rebates for solar panels, solar hot water, heat pumps to new home buyers up front. This will mean new home buyers will save $4,600 before they even move in and will remove double handling of installation, saving buyers money and hassle. To help prepare for the transition, the government is also investing $1 million in targeted training to ensure the construction industry is supported in the transition to all-electric and seven-star homes. This builds on Solar Victoria's $11 million training and workforce development package that will upskill plumbers and electricians to take advantage of the renewable energy revolution. Victorian plumbers and electricians will be key to delivering this critical transition. That's why the government is upskilling the plumbing and electrical workforce to ensure they have the right skills to take advantage of this growing industry. The government is delivering a $3 million package, including free, nothing's free, training for 1,000 plumbers and apprentices to design and install energy-efficient heat pumps, solar hot water systems, and free training for 400 electrician and four-year apprentices to safely design and install rooftop solar and home battery systems. To make it easier to go all-electric, eligible new home builders, as well as existing home owners and renters, can access the uh, nation-leading solar homes program, offering 1,400 solar panel rebates, and interest-free loans of 8800 for household batteries. All Victorian households and businesses are eligible for the VEU gas to electric rebates to upgrade heating and cooling and hot water heaters. The government will work... I mean, just think about this. If you've got 80% of homes tied up to gas, 
how much of an additional load burden is this going to be in the existing inf electricity infrastructure that they have in Victoria? And remember, it was only a couple of years ago that the Australian energy market regulator was warning that there'll be brownouts in Victoria. Are they prepared for this? You can't instantly increase the capacity of your variable renewable energy generation. You're at the whims of the weather. It's kind of a step back in time. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure the civil servants have thought this all out thoroughly. I'm sure it's fine. So think about it. If they don't have capacity, then they have to start importing energy from states that are producing it from coal fire. It's going to be worse for the environment. <laughs> oh, it's sad. The government will work closely with industry, including gas appliance manufacturers and building and construction sector, local government, trade unions, and consumer organizations to manage business and workforce transitions. Okay. To, oh, bloody hell. Well, let's uh, have a chat about this one. I would argue this should be an individual choice. If the you know, consumer, homeowner wants to have gas appliances in their house, let them do it. It's up to them. Some people, you know, maybe they prefer cooking with gas. Maybe they, they want to have access to that. Maybe they prefer heating with it. It's not like Victoria doesn't have ample resources of it. If the individual citizen who bought the house there can't bear the cost of that, they can find other ways to deal with it. Maybe, you know, if the government didn't hand out all these freebies, they wouldn't be in so much debt and, and putting such a burden on the citizens of Victoria. Uh, yeah, I see where they're getting at. It's probably for their constituency and the support Labor has in Victoria, it's probably a smart move. There's going to be support there for it. I question the actual environmental benefits of it, and I would argue that the supposed supposed uh, negative effects of burning gas doesn't seem to make much sense when you look at the chemistry, but you know, it's very clean burning. But that's it. There you go. We've got it there. Good luck to Victorians. It's a shame. I mean... I I had gas, I had bottled gas here. I got rid of it because uh, it was just too expensive. You know, but there you go. Can they even do that? Can Victorians get bottled gas now? That that's oh, see, cost of living will go up if you want a gas stove. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Check out Heiser Beam or Heiser Does, and if you're a fan and enjoy the channel, you can support us on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links, buy our pocket squares, or call me if you need an architect. I'll see you all next time. I wonder how many people are going to leave Victoria out of this. I mean, it's gas stoves. It won't drive anyone out. It's just a shame. It was, an, it was a benefit. I remember coming to Queensland and missing having gas.